Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspire Advantage, where we help students get accepted in medical school and other professional programs. Hello and welcome to another episode of MCAT Bytes. In this video, we'll be exploring proton nuclear magnetic resonance, or HNMR spectroscopy. It's a powerful tool for determining the structure of organic compounds. Understanding HNMR is essential for the MCAT, as there are quite a few questions that will be asked on it and the principles which it uses. So let's dive on in. HNMR spectroscopy is based on the principle that hydrogen nuclei, protons, in different chemical environments absorb electromagnetic radiation at different frequencies when placed in a strong magnetic field. The absorption of this radiation causes the protons to flip their spins, and the frequency at which this occurs is measured in an NMR spectrometer. The resulting spectrum plots the intensity versus the chemical shift, which is the frequency of absorption relative to the reference compound, usually trimethylsilane, TMS. For the MCAT, you must understand how to interpret HNMR spectra and use them to determine the structure of organic compounds. The key features of an NMR spectrum are, first, the chemical shifts. This is indicating the position of the signal on the x-axis. Measured in parts per million, or ppn, the chemical shift provides information about the electronic environment of the protons. Basically, you can think about the x-axis is telling you what, and the y-axis telling you how much. So there are a few different functional groups you actually need to memorize for the MCAT, which is kind of brutal, honestly. But make sure to just put them into your Anki cards, and it'll 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 work. But starting with alkanes, which are on the right, and I also want to draw something to your attention first here. So zero is on the right, whereas thirteen is on the left. This is kind of the opposite way you're probably used to reading a graph. I know it was for me the first time I saw it, but from kind of 0.5 to 1.5 or 2-ish, you'll see different times. That's where we're going to see those alkanes, which is just a single bond to the carbon. And then from sort of 1.5 to 2.5, we're going to see allopathic protons near electronegative atoms. So that's a fancy way to say, is the hydrogen adjacent to a oxygen? And then from 2 to 3, we'll see allopathic protons near carbonyl groups. There might be one adjacent from a carbonyl or next to a triple carbon, as we see here. Then from three to four, we see allopathic protons near oxygens or nitrogens. 4.5 to six, we're going to see vanillic and aromatic protons. <clears throat> 6.5 to 8.5 is where we're going to see our aromatic protons. This is a classic one, the MCAT love, love, loves testing. Then from nine to 10, we're going to see our aldehydic protons. And then from, you know, further down the spectrum, 10.5-ish to 13 is where we start to see the alcohol group of a carbonyl. So this is a super electron withdrawn hydrogen, which is why it's so far down the field or deshielded. Memorizing these ranges will help you quickly identify the types of proton present in a compound and something I highly recommend to achieve a top score on the ChemPhys section. Some rules of thumb to help you remember this is the further down field or deshielded we go, the closer that hydrogen is to an oxygen most of the time. So we see, you know, far up shield, it's just a hydrogen extra carbon. You know, you don't get less oxidized than that. And then at the super oxidized point, we have a hydrogen bonded not to a carbon, but to an oxygen. And then one over, the carbon's bonded to another oxygen. So this is quite a few oxygens close to such a little carbon, which is shooting it super far down. This is just kind of a rule of thumb. You know, the middle aromatics don't super fit that trend. <laughs> You could say, you know, also the more bonds move you to the left. So we've got some double bonds over here. But really, I recommend just starting to memorize this. But it gets even more exciting when we start throwing in multiplicity. This describes the splitting pattern of the signal, which arises from the interactions of neighboring protons. Now, this is really cool because you can figure out exactly what the structure is. The multiplicity provides information about the number of protons on adjacent carbon atoms. The splitting patterns are described here. So a singlet is just there's no neighboring protons, and that's just a straight line. A doublet means you've got one neighboring proton. So an example would be we measured this car, this hydrogen, and are imagining that these are all bound to carbons. We'd say, OK, hydrogen A, which is what we're looking at here, we look one carbon over, how many hydrogens is it bound to? Well, it's bound to one. OK, so that's a doublet. And then we see a double peak for just HA. Now, a triplet means there are two neighboring protons. So again, we're measuring HA. We look one carbon to the left. We'd also look one carbon to the right and above. We see that those are all bound to carbons, so they don't matter. There's no hydrogens there. Say, so, okay, there's one, two hydrogens. So we've got a triplet, which means we add 
an additional peak for it. And this is just showing you another way we could have a triplet, which HA is going to be the exact same thing because it's the same carbon electrostatically, and it is next to a carbon with two. So again, triplet, and like I said, the exact same pattern. Finally, for the MCAT, a quartet means you've got three neighboring protons. That would look something like this. So now you've got one, two, three, four different peaks. And you might be noticing a pattern here. The multiplicity is determined by the n plus one rule where n is the number of equivalent neighboring protons. So for example, a CH3 group attached to a carbon with one proton will appear as a doublet, right, as we saw up here. And then we could keep going past quartet to quintet, et cetera, but the MCAT isn't going to super care about that. You should know the term multiplet, which just means complex splitting pattern, overlapping signals. It's tough to see what's going on. Now let's talk about integration. And don't worry, we're not going to be doing calculus, but we are going to use the idea of calculus here because Integration is representing the area under each signal, or an integral, which is proportional to the number of protons contributing to that signal. By measuring the relative areas of these signals, you can determine the ratio of protons in different chemical environments. And this is a low-yield MCAT topic, so don't worry too much about this one. But the coupling constant is the distance between the peaks in a splitting pattern. It's measured in hertz. The coupling constant provides information about the relative orientation of neighboring protons, cis, trans, germinal, penicil. However, coupling constants are not typically tested on the MCAT. I have seen one question <laughs> ever. So very low yield, but possible. So I just want to make sure you've seen it, just in case you are that unlucky one. Let's take a look at this example problem here. So we have an unknown organic compound, which produces the following HMR signal. We've got a triplet at 1.2 ppms. We've got a quartet at 2.5 ppms. And we've got a multiplet at 7.2 ppms. So which of the following structures is most consistent with this HMR data? I want you to try and draw the compound. Well, let's analyze each of these. So the triplet at 1.2 integrates to three hydrogens. This indicates that there is a CH3 group with two neighboring protons. So I'm just going to draw that out. And we see they're all strings, so we don't have to worry about too many complex things. So I'll just put a carbon here, H2 on it. Then I'd look to see if we have an answer. And I'd say probably. Say this one is open still, this one is open still, this one is open still, this one's open still. So dang it, we haven't narrowed it down. Okay, so let's look at 2.5. 2.5 quartet integrates a 2H, suggesting a CH2 group with three neighboring protons, which is likely the CH3 group. So I'm going to assume, I'm going to start labeling these here. Let's call this carbon 1, this carbon 2, so this is probably carbon 2. And that still hasn't helped us solve this yet. So now let's look at that 7.2 big one. So this says it's integrating to a five hydrogen, which is characteristic of not quite far enough to be a carboxylic acid, but it is kind of right in the middle of the aromatic range, right? So I'd say maybe this is a mono substituted benzene ring, or at least something with a ton of hydrogens, right? Because we've got this multiplex group. So that would lead us to C. But what if we didn't know this is a mono substituted benzene group? Because that honestly takes some pretty advanced thinking here. So let's use the MCAT answers to help solve it. So we know it's not a single hydroxyl group because it's not far enough along. And we know it isn't just a bunch of alkanes because 7.2 is way out of the range of alkane land. So we're going to get rid of A. So we're kind of between C and D, right? And like I said with B, there's no way that the 7.2 is the carbon, is the hydrogen on this hydroxyl group because we'd be at like 12-ish. So I would just narrow it down. Say, okay, we've got CH3, CH2, C6, H5. And we've got this multiplex thing going on, which means there's probably a ton of hydrogens. So, okay, cool. This has a bunch of hydrogens. That's another truly valid way of answering this on the MCAT. HMR spectroscopy is super valuable for determining the structure of organic compounds. For the MCAT, focusing on understanding chemical shifts, multiplicities, and integration, and practice applying this knowledge to solve problems will be generally a good move. Mastering these concepts, you'll be well equipped to tackle HMR questions on the MCAT and absolutely rock the heck out of the ChemPhys section. So thank you so much for watching our video on HNMR, and I'll see you next time in CNMR.